Well, it's one of the biggest headlines over the last few months. One after another, some of the world's biggest tech companies have been announcing layoffs and it is happening here in India as well. We've just seen the news from Google that announced the other day that it was laying off about 12,000 employees. Microsoft had uh, announced layoffs of uh, more than 10,000 employees. Before that, you had Meta, Facebook that had announced uh, that it was cutting its workforce. Amazon has done it. Salesforce has done it today. Spotify has announced that it's going to be uh, firing a section of its employees as well. In India, we've had Swiggy, we've had Baiju's, Ola, ShareChat. Uh, these are the companies that have laid off their employees. And of course, there is very famously Twitter, which did that after Elon Musk's takeover. Yeah, that's now, what we're going to talk about today. This has, of course, uh, come at a time when the world economy, the economy is, is much better placed uh, compared to them. But what does this mean as far as our economy is concerned, employment opportunities in the tech sector are concerned as well. Let me first go across uh, to Mahesh Vyas uh, from the CMIE, an organization that uh, uh, collates and analyzes unemployment data um, very well for all of us. Thank you very much, Mahesh Vyas, for being with us. Uh, what is primarily happening with global tech companies first, Mahesh Vyas? Uh, is it that they went on a hiring spree during the pandemic, which has now got undone? Is it just as simple as that? Or are there more fundamental problems in how they structured their companies? No, I don't think there are any other reasons uh, than what you just stated. And that's what the tech companies are saying as well, that they overhired, they misjudged, and they expected uh, demand for labor to be much higher than it has turned out to be. We also are facing a global recession of sorts, at least in some parts of the world. So there is a reassessment of their business plans of the business prospects and therefore there are these big layoffs happening so there is this problem that, of anxiety understandably in that part of the world now th you know this is as far as big global tech is concerned google meta etc but we've also seen indian companies announcing layoffs as well i was just mentioning uh, you know swiggy and some others that have done the same now are the reasons the same are, are they similar they are quite similar. So uh, companies such as Swiggy, et cetera, also had overhired in a time when those services were used pretty intensely during the lockdown, when mobility was constrained. But as mobility has improved, as people, as people have started moving around, the need for home delivery has reduced. It hasn't gone down, but the rate at which it was growing has certainly come down. So companies could not have anticipated. They wouldn't like to miss a great chance for growth. So they would obviously, all companies do that. They kind of over-invest into capacities or into hiring people. So that has happened and we are now correcting for that, um, for that increase in uh, employment that was more than what turned out to be required. So, so where, where, where do all these people go? I, I mean, these were you know, tech jobs that were created over the years. Uh, is is do, do you believe that there could be a resurgence in the sector or, or, or they'll just have to be adjusted elsewhere? I think this is a mix of both the things, that uh, some of the retrenchment or some of the job losses will come back. So it's not that this is going to be a one-way traffic only. So just a couple of years, at least in India, there's a huge demand for software engineers. It was an extraordinary uh, increase in demand that led to lots of poaching around and there was some stress in the industry around that poaching. Now we are seeing that that stress has reduced. So you will have these cycles over a couple of years. Some of the people will get, uh, will get redeployed elsewhere. Over the longer run, one needs to understand that the age of getting a permanent job that you can be comfortable with for life is over. So industries will shed people industries will suddenly require lots of people so the dynamics of the labor markets have changed dramatically not only globally but also in india now where jobs are cannot be taken for granted as permanent forever even if you have a letter saying you have a permanent job i think that's a very interesting and important point that you make but you know what does this mean for the indian startup space mahesh vyas which is something you know that we've really been celebrating for some years now uh, you know, do you see this as, as a big setback for that sp startup ecosystem? Well, the startup system was, in a sense, disruptive, or rather, it was clearly very, very disruptive. So it was disruptive, it will continue to remain disruptive 
not for the established companies alone, but also for themselves. Startups will come, they will die, they will come back again. So this is a very different world, not just for labor, but even for enterprise. Earlier, in the olden days, you got a license to start a plant and then you were more or less assured for a market. That's not the case anymore in the, in the Indian markets as well. Startups will come, startups will die, there will be a flash in the pan, and some of them will become big for a long time to come. So this is a disruptive uh, situation that we are and should expect to remain in for a long time. Despite the fact that Indian companies, as we mentioned, have announced layoffs as well, how do we compare you know, to, to, to the West at the moment? Uh, you know, I, I, when you look at the bigger sort of picture on, on the economy and unemployment, etc., uh, do we, should we be taking comfort that we're a little better off maybe? So I think there's a cultural difference over here. So layoffs in the U.S., for example, or in the Western world, are more a part and parcel of their career. So it isn't, it is distressful, of course, but it is not shocking. Uh, as it will be for some time in India, it's a new thing in India to get a pink slip. Uh, whereas in the U.S., you did get a pink slip pretty often, and your savings was engineered to say that how many months of savings do you have liquid to ensure you can survive a layoff. In India, this is a new concept. So while in the West, this happens often, but it's also a part of their culture. In India, it's a new thing, which is starting to happen. We are seeing a new way of, uh, of labor being retrenched and being hired and being hired on very different terms. Right. Uh, so but Mahesh Vyas, uh, last question then, where do we go from here? Uh, do you think, do you think t the tech boom will ever come back or never say never? That's a difficult question to answer. I think the uh, Indian tech industry has been quite resilient. It has uh, repeatedly rediscovered itself. I have reasonable faith that they will continue to do so. But quick, uh, quick one more question, which is that what happens to all the Indians in the US right now who got the pink slip uh, working for these big tech giants? They're there on H-1B visas. Many of them are you know, in the midst of applying for green cards, etc. This has put them in a very difficult position. What do they do? That is a very stressful situation. And uh, I don't know, I, I just can't imagine what uh, their status will be. Uh, it's very difficult. Uh, if your visas are not applied for or they are suspended or some such thing, it's really troublesome because labor markets are not so, uh, so easy to move around internationally. So I think that's a real difficult spot. Mahesh Vyas. Thank you very much from the Centre of Monitoring the Indian Economy. Thank you very much for joining us today. Let me go straight across to our panellists this evening. And I'm joined first by Yash Agarwal, uh, who was actually recently laid off from uh, Twitter India. And, and, and Yash, I just wanted to ask you first. I mean, this, is, this has happened to you some months ago. How are you doing? How are you coping with this? Hi, Nidhi. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. Uh, great privilege. I've been good. Um, it's been, what, three, four months now. And uh, I've found, feet, found my feet, if I can put it that way, right? Uh, I'm, I've started a firm of my own and uh, just building on a range of no different things uh, as the way ahead. But, but of course, you know, so these things, as you just discussing with uh, Vyasar as well, that until it hits you, it, it's always like a shock, right? Even if you see it coming. So, so there's that. So did it come as a complete shock to you when it happened? Uh, it was a shock for sure. When it happens, it always hits like a shock, but I'll also it'll be unfair of me to not add this right now, which is that we saw this coming in the sense, and it's not a Twitter thing. Uh, I would say that, you know, uh, the global macroeconomic scenario, we've seen this in 2001, in 2008, almost once a decade on an average, it does happen. So, so yeah. All right, Prabir Jha, uh, who is one of India's most respected uh, HR minds, uh, joins us as well. Let me introduce uh, NS Rajan. Uh, former member of the Group Executive Council at Tata Sons, uh, Chitiz Agarwal, a former project lead manager at IBM and CEO of Tequila Global Services is with us, and Anurag Aman, the country head and managing director of Kincentric, also joining us. Thank you very much to all of you for being with us. And I apologize that it's a manual today. At least I'm the sole female voice here. So I'll uh, try to tilt the balance. But uh, Mr. Jha, I, I wanted your take on this. Uh, you know, is, is the worst over, or do you think we are going to still see more layoffs coming, even in India? So, Nidhi, I think uh, it's going to intensify. It's a lot to do with, uh, A, the general sentiment, a little bit of the funding winter that seems to be getting prolonged, 
and uh, there will be a ripple effect of what's happening uh, in the markets beyond India. So uh, very clearly the worst is not over. But having said that, you know, I think sometimes we do get a little carried away with the uh, emotional upsurge rather than looking at the relative uh, numbers. So 12,000 or 10,000 or 18,000 or whatever numbers that we uh, are hearing about, they are big anywhere in the world. But when it is 12,000 of, let's say, 87,000 or 18,000 of 1.5 million or 10,000 of 221,000, we are still actually not thinking of huge percentage uh, uh, decreases. So the emotional sensitivity is very high. The, uh, the seriousness of the crisis, I think, uh, doesn't go away. But at the moment, I think the exaggeration of exits in itself, I think, is something that uh, we should be uh, not overly uh, uh, psyched about. Why do you about, call it you an know? exaggeration? Are you saying it's more of a correction rather than, uh, you know, the, the sort of yeah. the way it's being projected? Yeah. So very clearly, as uh, you know, Mahesh also said, and I agree completely with uh, many of the things that he said, uh, it has been misplaced uh, uh, projection of headcount needs. I think uh, the business environment has uh, uh, played very differently. So some bit of this correction happens and happens in business and uh, in sectors where people cost is a bigger part of your pie, you know, layoffs happen and happen more naturally in the West, relatively newer in India, as he said. But the fact is this correction would, would have had to happen if, if the matters uh, turned out the way they were. But I think the reason why I would be a little careful about exaggerating that is while the it is not over yet so we don't know how the cookie will crumble but the 40s and the hundreds and the 150s i don't think as yet how it will right. play out we don't know and we will debate that at that point in time but i just want to put that in context because sometimes you know uh, our debates can get uh, a little hijacked just because of the emotional sentiment when thousand people were hived off but of what base population so the percentages are still relatively small is right. it a good situation to be in the answer is no but uh, uh, very clearly this happens and uh, and uh, whether it could have been done better is a, is another question but uh, right I mean, I, 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 as both you and Mahesh Vyas said it's a culture that we're not really used to here in India so I, I guess in a way it makes even bigger headlines uh, but, but let me ask you Anurag Aman you know do you agree with that assessment that the worst isn't over and therefore, what, what does that mean for the Indian startup ecosystem at the moment? And, you know, it, it went through this lovely golden period, but is that over? So let me uh, really just tell one thing. See, this is not a new phenomenon in India. If you really look at it, if you go to almost every year, many organizations which are, whether they are in manufacturing setup, whether they are in uh, banking and financial services setup, whether they are in even IT setup, it does happen on a regular basis in different ways. Now today, the situation seems to be fairly stark simply because during COVID, we saw significant excess hiring. During COVID, we also saw, because of the demand, of course, we also saw that you know the compensation levels that were there in the market for technology talent, it went through the roof. And every hot skill was actually uh, priming at almost you know 20 to 30 percent even above say 90th percentile of the compensation range of a particular level now in that scenario everybody just to retain this talent they ended up paying all of that the other part for the indian ec startup ecosystem was that when we started building the organization some of the basic things if you really look at how do you create that organization what are the kind of uh, levers that you keep in mind, some of those actually multiplied simply because they were in a rush to grow. The scale was too large to let go of. So hence, everybody started doing that. Today, when you look at any of this, the change that is taking place, I think it is only because, you know, we just over-invested at that point in time. Today, when companies are going for, whether it is uh, uh, the investors are asking questions on accountability on the cost side, the cost to income ratios, or investors are asking for, you know, how do you manage, you know, so much of a talent while the business is not there or business is seeing headwinds. That's the time when they're looking at, you know, scaling it back. On the other hand, there are IPOs coming up, right? A lot of IPOs we have seen, their costs, again, the valuations are very high, but the real revenues of these firms are very low. From that scenario, they have to actually slow it down. Having said all of this, I don't think we are really 
seeing the end of the tech boom. I think uh, tech is here to stay. The the why the disruptors may get disrupted a little bit, but I don't see any reason why some of the tech talent, which has been absolutely so coveted, will have any reason. In a to way, worry. perhaps what you're saying is that it'll find its own balance. Uh, you know, absolutely. once in, you know these corrections, in a sense, are made. But I have to ask, Dr. Enes Rajan, you're here with us. Uh, I mean, maybe this is a stupid question, but did 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 tech companies not think that the pandemic would end one day? when they did this large scale hiring maybe you have uh, actually hit the nail on the head so l let me pick up two distinct elements of what you're asking and it's, it's far from foolish i think you <laughs> asked a very profound question thank you now look, there are technical reasons that you can cover and i'll very quickly you know uh, go through them so one is the fact that there is an economic uncertainty there are fears of recession the other is the fact that the consumer demand is weakening uh, because of a pandemic and post pandemic issues there is also a repo rate and uh, rate increases that are happening, which are actually making cost of capital very, very uh, difficult for companies to handle. You have pressure from investors who are trying to push for profitability. You're also hoping that you know by doing this in terms of layoffs, you'll be enhancing profitability and saving costs and all of that in a declining revenue market. But there is one thing that Mahesh perhaps didn't touch is the fact that in uh, 2021, Apple introduced a new privacy rule. What it did in bargain is that it gave the option to people who use the Apple phone to decide whether they would like to be, uh, their data is being accessed by others, do you permit it or not? And almost 95% of the people said no, which meant that getting data, which is third party data, which was easily available, is now becoming increasingly difficult. And the big tech companies have lost almost 280, $290 billion. But having said that, if, if I look at, uh, and your program rightly says no spin, right? And if you really look at the reason behind the kind of layoffs, I, I think if I have to use one phrase, it is leadership failure. Failure in terms of not being able to define the direction the way you should. Failure in terms of not standing by the values that you espouse. Failure in terms of doing indiscriminate hiring, wanting to grow without any compassion behind it. Typically trying to copy others who are doing the same thing because it looks good to the shareholders. And, and not being able to actually marshal an argument. And, and imagine me, the world's biggest companies did that. This is a, I mean, this is a failure of leadership, as you say, at the highest levels in, in the biggest companies in the world. Absolutely. And for me, it's, you know, uh, it's not a question of 10,000, 5,000, 50,000. I don't think one murder is less uh, you know, troublesome than 10 murders. So I, I think the whole aspect is N equals one. Whether you, when you're firing off, are you doing it justly? Uh, is it fair? Is it well thought through? Have you looked at other options? There are a number of things that have to go into thinking before leaders actually pick this as the lowest hanging fruit. I mean, it's not very different from, you know, uh, probably the state of mediocrity in the way you think. And if you are not able to foresee the writing on the wall, you know, whose fault is it? And I can tell you, and I, and I don't want to take time away, but in terms of hiring, there are people who have fired people and within three months they're hiring again. Yeah. Now, why is it you couldn't think of alternate options? And, and, and I think that is very distressing. I think that's very, very well articulated by you. And I think there'll be many people out there who will sh share that sort of, uh, that, that anger that comes you know, forth uh, in, in terms of failure of leadership, as you put it. Chitis Agarwal, would you agree with uh, you know, Mr. Rajan there on his assessment? And what do you see then as the future for tech, especially in India? Are you, are you still hopeful that we will eventually, maybe not right away, but in, in some months come out of this? See, first of all, uh, as a CEO, right, uh, firing is the most difficult decision, you know, for any entrepreneur, right? I'm telling you, as per my experience, and of course, other people who are on this call. So, you know, none of the entrepreneur wants to do firing, right? Uh, see, what I have seen in this current trend is uh, that during COVID, of course, you know, there was a hiring spree. But I would say, you know, there was also a hiring spree of, uh, you know, like some hiring some, you know, some for some aspirations, you know, for example, if a company wants to invest in some new technologies, which might be profitable after a few years, right? Or investing in few things, you know, which can increase the revenue for the future, you know? Those kind of things, what they have hired, they have now put it on the pause and they might have left, let go of the team, which they have hired for future, you know? But having said that, you know, if you talk about tech space, I'm, I'm talking from the ground where, of course, we are also hiring people for our own company and for other companies for which we hire. 
you know honestly we are still struggling to hire the right talent you know to uh, i'm talking about all the right talent you know in terms of these technologies in terms of these things if you talk about you know like uh, uh, people are firing i would say you know where are those people because if i go to the market and try to hire a nice ai guy or a nice service now guy or sales force guy i'm not finding anyone right so but you're saying say, that there's a lack of talent that you're finding to hire people when there are so many people out there who are clearly looking for jobs in this sector of, of course there is of course there is you know as i mentioned like you know in terms of niche developers there is always a need of them there is uh, india is a growing stage and india is known for you know their tech talent right so there is always a need of tech talent and uh, i would say you know like for a good people who are you know up to speed and who are able to perform i don't yeah. think they have any issues in getting a job but i think for the ones who have joined this uh, you know wave you know where they have gotten into the industry because there was large uh, you know demand supply gap of course they are having they are finding it harder yash let me right. ask you the last question then you, to- you you told us that you you, you know gone and started your own thing yeah. after the layoff uh, at twitter uh, what about your colleagues it's a it's three very specific things that they are into right one is a lot of them have already started at big tech again right in different roles and almost always a step up so i'll agree with you know what shadi was saying so those avenues are still open right uh second is a lot of them are doing independent consulting right uh like they have the expertise and you know the networks and the contacts and the web with all so that's something that they're doing few of them are also waiting it out right uh i know if, i don't want to name names but you know a lot of people most of the people that i know they do have offers from a range of places right uh they're working different roles at twitter right sales finance legal so they're marketing waiting what and have watching. you yeah but this is waiting it out and yeah they learn something even better all right i i have to leave it there today it's a fascinating conversation thank you very much to all of you for joining us and i wish all those uh all the very best as they look for new avenues uh, in what is a very difficult economic environment all over the world at the moment thank you very much